everybody! Welcome to the show! Today is International Palindrome Day. It is 02022020. Uh, I don't reckon that's ever going to come back again in our lifetimes. Uh, we just left Key West this morning and uh, we're on our way headed west out to Boca Grande, out to the sandbars as I've heard the locals describe it. And uh, I remember I liked Boca Grande quite a bit last time I was there, so I'm going to go pay it a visit. Nothing there, just a beach and a nice quiet place to hang out. And uh, hopefully we're going to have some quiet weather for the next few days. Uh, so I moved off of the mooring yesterday and anchored uh, just just um, east of Fleming Key to get some protection from a passing cold front. And it worked like a charm. Uh, yesterday afternoon and overnight when those strong northwesterlies came in and I was singing hymns to my spade anchor. A series of squalls just came through and this guy dragged his Bruce anchor. It's a very, it's a soft mud and weedy bottom. So the spade anchor's holding. But what I'm concerned about is this power belt that's almost dead up wind to me here. And he's definitely dragged his anchor. He looks like he reset. I can't tell if there's anybody on board. Phew. All right, well, I can see there is somebody aboard. He's up on the bow, so they're, uh, he's aware of the situation. That's a huge relief. It's having somebody come crashing down on top of you in a dark and stormy night is not a lot of fun. When a volley of squalls came through this morning and the wind shifted north pretty rapidly and my anchor pulled out, So, and uh, despite the rude awakening, I've remembered to turn the camera on, and now I'm scurrying forward. Uh, as you can see, we're drifting. The bow has swung off the wind, and I'm trying to pull the anchor up, but the problem is it's on the wrong side of the bobstay. Uh, and once I get to the chain, I'm not going to be able to. Uh, I'm not going to be able to pull it up without uh, getting the boat up head to wind somehow. So, I've given up trying to pull the anchor up. I'm going to try to get her up head to wind by raising the mainsail, which is always fun with the boat, with the wind slightly after the beam. And I do have some room here, but I don't have all the sea room in the world. Uh, I've just missed an anchored boat, but I still have... Uh, the boat the other day that dragged its Bruce anchor is basically right to leeward of me. So I got to uh, I got to scramble out and make sure I get clear of him. Uh, just trying to get that mainsail up. And as usual, trying to raise the main with the boat not head to wind as the gaff is fouling on the running backstays, uh, fouling on the running backstay and on the lee topping left. That's what I'm trying to clear right now. got it somewhat cleared. I'm just going to have to raise the main because I'm running out of room here. I have to get some canvas up and try to get that bow up head to wind or get her over on the other tack so I can pull that anchor up. And as you can see, it looks like actually the anchor is trying to reset because she is coming up head to wind right now. And the camera got knocked by the main sheet. And she actually did, uh, the, the anchor did reset briefly. And it pulled her around on the other tack. So now I'm back at it, hauling like crazy trying to get that anchor up. And, 
Oh, there was also that powerboat anchored. I believe he started dragging as well, because you can see he's he's motoring out against uh, against this stuff. And uh, I did see he, he moved out further into garrison bite away from the mooring field and anchored. Uh, so I managed to get the the anchor up, but the problem is is that uh, I can't get the main set because uh, the topping lift, the starboard side topping lift, is still hooked on the gaff. So, without being able to set the main really well, as we can see right here, I'm unable to tack or I just can't get up enough speed. So there's a shot of the topping lift. If you look closely, you can see it's hooked on the end of the gaff. And the only way to free that is to lower the mainsail, but I can't do that right now in this situation. And since I'm unable to tack her, uh, we're just going to put her through a job. Oh, come on, baby. We're getting into shallow water here, but she's answering her helm. Uh, it's hard to bear away with just the mainsail because she's got quite a bit of weather helm. And you see, once that main comes over, now she's she's gonna she's gonna turn around very quickly. And you see the blue boat just coming into view. That that was the uh, that was the boat I was worried about. I, w I was dragging straight down towards them. Uh, so lucky, luckily, uh, I missed I missed him there. And so I got things cleared up. And uh, now we're just tacking out into Garrison Bight, where I'm going to get some room and drop my anchor, and then uh, get myself prepared to sail away today. Just all kinds of fun and games ensued. And uh, I, I tacked out further into Garrison Bight and anchored again get myself uh, kind of collected and also get the boat ready to sail. And uh, the anchor start dragging again. Not holding this crap. And uh, so got sailing, but I noticed she was she was moving very slowly and hard to maneuver. And then I figured out that I'd hooked a crab pot. So the line appears to be caught between uh, the rudder and the end of the keel. So the only thing to do is get a sharp knife, dive over the side and cut it loose. But once I have a look over the side, I don't see it anywhere. security of being on a mooring, but of course I was on a mooring that broke, but uh, once once I got the mooring inspected and more lines on it, you're secure there. But the cold fronts often bring uh, very strong winds from the north, and Garrison Bight is not well sheltered from the north, so it's very rough. 
Um, my last night on the town there on uh, Friday night, thunderstorms went through and I had to dingy out. The wind was up 25 knots out of the north. It was, it was pretty. It was a pretty white knuckle ride. So it's not a very sheltered place. And the winds around here, um, the weather systems I found were quite ferocious. So I think if I did Key West again, I'd probably come back in March. I think last time I was here was in late February, early March, uh, when the Gulf fronts start, aren't penetrating so far south and weather's starting to get a little more benign. Uh, it's probably a little better then. And I probably wouldn't stay for so long. Uh, I think Key West is a fun place for maybe a week or two, but not really good for a long term. So yeah. we're, we're going to go out to Boca Grande and then start doubling back toward Marathon and then up toward Miami. I sometimes find myself awake in the wee hours of the morning thinking, what the hell am I doing? I did a lot of education, and then seven years in the financial world. This was surely sufficient for a lucrative career track to a comfortable retirement. But I only dreamed of going to sea, and well, here I am. I know why I'm here, or really, why I am not there. I refused an ordinary life. Well, with all the hubbub, I had to give Jordan Peterson's best-selling book, 12 Rules for Life, a read. And lo and behold, it was most worthwhile. He has a chapter in there about the kids with skateboards who used to do all sorts of daredevil stunts in and around the University of Toronto campus, including leaping up onto the steel railings leading down concrete steps, riding those rails and then leaping off and skating away. What they were doing was both stupid and dangerous, and they were mostly boys, but also brave. The element of actual danger in their play brought them close to chaos. Now, chaos is a high dollar word when used by the old professor, steeped in biblical metaphor. But we all should know that it is only at the knife's edge of danger, real or perceived, that our most valuable and enduring life skills are learned. The men who invented our civilization, and they were mostly men, lived on the edge of chaos. Those who pioneered our political principles, economic principles, the sciences, the mind-boggling technologies, those who fought the bloody wars against all those who would stop such human progress, those individuals pushed the boundaries of human possibility everywhere and typically paid a heavy personal price for it. Yet our Western civilization by design is the constant pushing away of chaos. Next time you are at an airport serving a major city, just observe the people hustling and bustling about, with all the electronic wizardry at their fingertips, unthinkingly shuffling into a flying machine, which can cross the United States from coast to coast in about six hours. Not so long ago, such a journey would be a major expedition, taking months with loss of life probable. Few will ever know the dangers which were ever present to our ancestors. Ferocious animals, blizzards, floods, or drought, such things seldom pose anything more than an inconvenience to the people of the West. Yet while the harsh natural environment of our ancestors is no longer a daily reality for most of us, our psychology was formed by those conditions and is not easily rewired. As successive generations of men grow up further and further from the chaos, and further removed from the tutelage of men who were themselves tempered and sharpened by the chaos. These men will yet instinctively seek a masculine identity, but have no idea how and where to find it. The modern economy offers many jobs, but few in which men are uniquely qualified. With the exception of CEOs and perhaps engineers, fields which are naturally male-dominated rarely carry much prestige, fields such as construction, oil drilling, or fishing. So when I read about young men, quote unquote, failing to launch, young men preferring to lose themselves in pure fantasy, in video games and porn rather than growing up, this is where my mind goes. This is escapism, 
which is only better than joining gangs or Al-Qaeda, which offer a reality to men that is merely destructive. Men are never happy playing dress-ups. Men need to build, create, explore, take risks, and blaze new paths. And they need women who admire them for it. Now where exactly this new frontier lies for the next generation of men, I have no idea. For me, it was always the sea. Though it is an old, nay, ancient frontier, I knew that once away from the land, I was living in a world not much different from that of Slocum or Sinbad, especially if I actually sailed, that is, in an engineless boat. At sea, the chaos is ever-present. One misstep can send you overboard, while you will leave no trace but some calories for marine life. It does not matter one bit how cool you are or how rich you are. What's that line from Shakespeare? What cares these roars for the name of king? The sea is indiscriminate and uncertain. The sailor's life is elemental and sometimes brutal. This is a career path based in reality, as I see it, not human fancy. Successful sailors and seaworthy sailing boats are adaptations to natural forces as old as the earth, not the latest fashions from Paris. Yet it still bothered me tremendously that I had no plan for making money again. If you're not earning any dough, you're either a retiree or a bum. Then I got this little YouTube gig going, and though it does not pay all the bills, it is something. And I just have to say that it is amazing what a little earned income does for the soul. Of course, YouTube is showbiz, and one does need some sort of marketing strategy. One needs to follow fashion, in other words. But that's fine. So long as I have my ship in the wide ocean to roam, I feel that I'm doing business with the world on my terms, and that's all I ask for. Also, I do not wish to end up a beachcombing hermit. So let me close with a shout out to all those of you who have subscribed to my channel and support my work. Having you along as virtual shipmates has been quite a pleasure, and many of your comments and questions make me feel useful.